Booktube Nation. I'm Sam here again with Baron and Me Books and today I'm here to talk about my fairy tale thon wrap up. So as you can see some of my guys we've started decorating for fall. Um, I think I'm finished. I still have to carve the jack-o'-lantern though, and I always wait closer, of course, to do that. But um, yeah, I'm really excited. We've got our family-themed costumes ready to go for this year. So um, yeah, it should be lots of fun. <laughs> so if you were able to join us for Fairy tale -a I just want to thank you for being part of that. And also, um, if anyone who loves fairy tales or fairy tale retellings, let me know your favorite down below. I'd love to hear. So, <laughs> I did not read as much as I usually do. Um, I had a little bit of a slow start, but um, yeah, I still want to share what I read with you and I'm definitely looking forward to the next one. So, the first book I read was The Winter Sister by Megan Collins and I was on the Witch's Path. So this was a retelling uh, with black on the cover and um, I have kind of mixed feelings about this one. There were some things I enjoyed and some things I didn't. Um, this was a buddy read with mom. Hi mom! Um, I think she liked it even less than I did. But um, it's supposed to be, I, I read in a blog that it was um, like a modern retelling of the Persephone myth. It's there. You have to really dig for it though and at a point where you kind of feel like you're reaching for it. Um, one of the characters names is Persephone which is probably the thing that is most obvious. Um, if you know the myth really well and you watch how the family um, acts and adapts you may be able to find a little bit more. I did but it's not a super obvious retelling or reimagination. For me this was just okay. Um, I, I didn't, I prefer more atmospheric writing um, when I'm like reading myth and fairy tale and this just wasn't really that for me but I did kind of like a couple of the characters. So yeah, I haven't read a lot of thrillers so I can't really like give my opinion on the overall genre but I've read some better ones this year though I think this might be ideal for people who read a lot of YA and are thinking about transitioning into thrillers. I think that this might be a really good transition book. So that was The Winter Sister by Megan Collins. Next I read The Beast is an Animal by Peter Nell Van Arsdale. I really enjoyed this but it was not at all what I thought I was getting. So when Beauty and the Beast, the live one, came out a few years ago, um, I think this was marketed and I ended up buying it like with Beauty and the Beast retellings. It's not what this is. Um, it is still fairy tale. It is ominous. Um, it's basically centers around this girl from this very kind of rural village and they have farmers and craftsmen and things like that and these awful things start to happen and there are creatures in the woods and things like that and it's really just her story and it's kind of a struggle with good versus evil and an inner struggle and um, I found like there were a lot of metaphors in this and, um, and there were a lot of religious references which I'm kind of picky about. I'm a, a Christian myself and I get a little nervous when religion is mentioned in fiction but I didn't feel like this one was too badly done. Um, I got the point what they were trying to express with it. You know just kind of like anything done to extreme is wrong but yeah I really enjoyed it if you are looking for like a fairy tale type fantasy book um, and you enjoy things set around forests if you enjoy fairy tale retellings in general I might give this a try next I picked up the wicked deep and this is by Shay Earnshaw now I was really loving this I think this may have been my favorite book of the readathon had I finished it 
as you can see, I did not finish it. And now I'm in the midst of another readathon, so it may be a while before I get back to this. But I was really enjoying it, so I do want to finish it. This was really popular on BookTube a while ago, so I'm sure most of you know what it's about. But if you don't, um, this is about a small town, and there's an island off this town where our main character lives. And there's this curse that's been plaguing this place over and over and over for like centuries. And it's kind of strange because like when the curse season starts, tourists come to the area to try and experience um, part of the curse elements. And um, yeah, it's kind of twisted in that way, but I was really enjoying it. Um, I found that the setting and the characters were interesting. I found it to be quite descriptive writing. Um, but yeah, I was enjoying it and I do plan on finishing this. And then I was trying to get in one more book before the end of the readathon. This is Monstrous, a graphic novel, volume one. This is by Marjorie Liu and um, illustrated by Sana Takeda. I have read this before, so this was a reread for me. And confession, I finished, it was like 12.39. So, okay, it wouldn't technically count if it was like a prize thing, but I'm gonna count it for the wrap up because I hadn't gone to bed yet and I really tried to get another one in. I've read this before and the last time I read it, I really enjoyed it. I think maybe I enjoyed it more the first time I read it. This time that I read it, I noticed how gritty it really is, but the art is really beautiful and there is something really eerily beautiful about the story too. Um, so this really is about, um, it's, like a, it's like a dystopian world where there are different races and sects of people and like some people have, they're not, well, some of the characters in the book are like a blend of animal and human, some are human, some are like old gods, and um, it's got its own mythology, which I kind of find really interesting. I think that's my favorite part of this, but then it kind of breaks it down and it explains it to you fairly well. It has this beautiful map um, to follow along with the world. And then there's like these talking cats um, who are also part of this universe. And um, they have a lot of knowledge, it seems like. It seems to me almost like they're kind of like tricksters, like Puck in mythology. But there's a page in here that shows like all different races. My favorite part of this, again, is that it creates its own mythology. And it is kind of dark. This is definitely adult. I would not let a child of mine read this. For a graphic novel to be able to create its own mythology and to have me buy into it and to have me um, interested to see what's going to happen to the characters in that limited amount of time. I am invested and I, I do have the second volume so I want to read it hopefully sometime this year. So those are all the things that I read for Fairy Tailathon. Again, if you were able to join us, thank you so much. Even if you're only able to read one book during the Fairy Tailathon time, um, we really appreciate it. Um, I just, I, we love fairy tales, mythology, and folklore, and we just want to set aside um, a period of time <laughs> maybe twice um, each year to go ahead and dedicate to that. So I had a lot of fun. Um, I hope that you did too. Thanks for being here with me today. Farewell for now. Bye-bye.